Okay, we have on the phone with me, very proud, I should say, uh, on the telephone all the way from the United Kingdom, I believe, uh, Rosie Garland. Welcome to the Church of Rock. Well, hello, and how fabulous to be on the Church of Rock. It's really fantastic. And uh, I'm always amazed at technology, how I can be sitting in Manchester, north of England, and talking to people in um, Oregon. I think it's wonderful. It is, especially with musicians and artists uh, like ourselves, because back in the day, as you well know, you had to have everyone in one room, and now it's like you can be in Cambodia, South Africa, and England at the same time and put together an album. <laughs> it's fantastic. Yeah, it really is great. Do you uh, yourself get to utilize much of that technology as far as recording and re doing things like that uh, with that medium? Well, funny you should say that. And uh, we actually haven't planned these questions out, so it is all completely as it comes. Um, I have just returned to the UK after being in Georgia, um, near, just outside Athens in Georgia, with uh, Tom Ashton, the guitarist with the March Violets, and yeah. William Faith, the new bassist. And uh, we have we spent most of January writing an album in the same room, to old school. Wow, that's awesome. That's a plus. Yeah, I mean, that that's like, you know, news for you. Uh, nobody's really heard that yet, so uh, you heard it here first. Well, wh what a wonderful place to do it, because the, uh, the music history and scene in Athens, Georgia, is just legendary. Oh, yeah. I mean, Athens, um, downtown Athens has got this lovely sort of uh, walk of fame where there are... Um, uh, like giant music picks set into the pavement, which have got names of um, all the lovely Athens bands. I mean, obviously featuring bands like Pylon and the B-52s and R.E.M., but loads of other bands as well, obviously. And uh, Tom lives, um, Tom Ashton lives just outside Athens. He's lived there for, oh, is it 15 years now or 10 years? Um, and he's got a studio in his place and um, a lot of local bands obviously use his studio for production and mixing and recording and so myself william flew down from from chicago i flew in from the uk and we had that wonderful experience of creating our own bubble and writing in it and i know we started talking about technology and how wonderful technology is and how yes you can write an album on separate sides of the world but there really is something very magical about that energy um, and synergy of being in a room with other creatives that you trust and who are encouraging and just the magic that happens. So, yeah, I'm, I guess I'm sounding a bit um, high at the moment. Um, and if I am sounding like euphoric, it's because... January has just been this spectacular month. It's been a revelation. That's beautiful. And you're riding the wave of uh, high frequencies. Thank you. You put it so much better than me. <laughs> <laughs> I try. But no, I, I really uh, respect you so much. I know you've been in the business a long time. You know, yeah, a lot of folks, yeah. <laughs> a lot of people might not know that you have come a long way from playing that elf queen at school at the age of five. Oh, my goodness gracious, that story's got out. Yes, I was age five. I was, um, <laughs> I learned a great deal about performance because I, I stood on the side of the stage, like little me, five years old, and I kind of crooked my finger to get my elves to come on stage. And the teacher sort of like said to me, oh, no, dear, you don't do it like that. Big arm gestures. You've got to wave your arms around. And I think I learned something very important about punk performance then. You wave you your arms around a lot. Yeah, there you go. That, that's, goth, that's goth performance summed up by a school teacher in elementary. And you started, it was your first dose of learning how to take direction and, have, and to, to, to listen to the producer sometimes. Oh, there's that as well. Oh, God, yeah. I'm, I actually really quite like working with producers because a good producer wants you to create the best song you possibly can. Oh, gosh, I'm, I've been blessed myself, and you're right about that. It, it took me a long time to uh, learn the humility and the, uh, the letting go of the surrender to a producer and to the trust 
that goes in with this loving thing that's almost like a child you're creating when it comes to songs. And the only guy that I've ever really truly met that I think is the best is Paul Rossler from the legendary death rock band 45 Grave and the Screamers. Oh, wow. And yeah. Nina Hagen. He was with Nina yes. Hagen for many years. Oh, my goodness. Right. Yeah. God, sounds like that was a wonderful experience. Well, back to you. Um, the March Violets, um, just for a lot of listeners that are being educated, along with the Sisters of Mercy, were one of the very first drum machine bands based uh, from the 80s, part of a, a northern UA, you know, like United Kingdom musical movement that had its roots in punk rock, but created something completely and utterly different uh, as far as vibe, sound, uh, appearance. Uh, you had a male and a female fronting the band. Yeah. So it was a very interesting... And then the name of the band, March Violets, just is absolutely lovely. Oh, thank um, you. So, the, you know, the first version of the band splitting up in around 86. I know there was a homecoming gig around 2007-ish, yeah. starting off as just a one-off, and then kind of uh, the demand and the the love that you guys have for what you do continued. Yeah. Um, the first album, of course, Made Glorious, which is glorious, by the way. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Yeah, so, what you know, that takes us up to today. I try to, you know, go into the past a little bit, but a lot of that stuff people know, and why regurgitate the same questions? So, I know a lot of people might not know, Rosie, that you go by an alter ego, uh, Rosie uh, yeah. Lugosi. Yeah. Well, Rosie a Lugosi. Number, a, a number of alter egos, actually. Yeah, um, I, uh, <laughs> I, I I get bored quite quickly, and um, as well as writing song lyrics, I also write short fiction. I write poetry, and I write novels. Um, and as well as all of that, um, I also perform in queer cabaret as um, Rosie Lugosi, the Vampire Queen, and um, that is another string to my bow and completely different and um so i just love i love variety um yeah um um walt whitman once said i contain multitudes and uh i take a lot of inspiration from him um mm. i think i contain all kinds of multitudinous ways of approaching creativity and um cabaret is one of them novel writing is another and songwriting is another well you had me at walt whitman so god god bless you <laughs> i love walt whitman so yeah that was great um i know you've uh, a writer of novels how many novels have you completed um oh um i've completed uh yeah, that's that's the question to ask any novelist. Um, I've had three published by HarperCollins, but I have written more. Uh, I wrote uh, three novels before I got published, and those three novels are currently sitting under the bed somewhere and will never see the light of day. But, um, I once used to think of them as failed novels, but now I think of them as apprentice novels i learned how to write a novel by writing three quite bad ones really <laughs> well you know that's well it's it's subject to your opinion but at the same time we do have to have some sort of practice and, and some sort of uh uh, milestone as we progress in our journey to let us know that hey this is the way it's done not this way and then we go aha now i've got the flow going you know yeah and it's like i don't think there's anything wrong with um practicing um or learning your craft um who is it malcolm gladwell said you've got to do something for ten thousand hours before you're any good at it and i think everyone who's ever been in a garage band or mm -hmm. you know the high school band um knows that you spend a lot of years playing <laughs> awful heavy metal covers that's what i did anyway <laughs> i mean that's you know, right I Every high school has got a shabby garage band, and I was in that band at high school, um, along with, yeah, and we did play heavy metal covers um, before we you discovered punk and started writing our own things. You know, I, I, you know, I owe so much to punk. It, it, you know, it told me, don't let anything stop you. Yeah, there's nothing like punk rock. It's the thing. I, I'm, I had a similar background. A few years in the metal thing, and then when I found punk, it was like, oh boy, this is the, these are the real rebels here. So, yeah. 
These are the real people that are afraid, not afraid to tell the truth and be honest and, and demand change, not ask for it. Um, yeah. Rosie, I'm wondering, do you, are you like, I'm not sorry to sound, I'm not trying to talk about me whatsoever. Uh, oh, do you, like myself, I'm into music so heavily. Are you, are you very diverse with your listening habits? Do you listen to heavy metal and punk and stuff still? Um, yes, I do. Um, but I do have very, um, I've, I've always had really eclectic tastes. Um, you know, I think people imagine that in the 80s when the March Violets started that I was just listening to punk and post-punk and goth and indie. And I wasn't. I was also listening to a lot of world music, um, Afrobeat. Um, I was hugely, I mean, the 80s were the time I was massively into Frank Zappa and Captain Beefheart. Um, So it's like... as well as listening to kind of old style crooners like Peggy Lee. Um, and I don't, you know, my attitude is, well, if it's good, I'll listen to it. Absolutely. Music is just wonderful. I, are you a fan of, just a quick question, do you happen to be a fan of Tiny Tim? Um, not massively. He kind of passed me by. Um, I think I just kind of missed the point. And my attitude okay. is like... He wasn't speaking to me, but he spoke to a heck of a lot of other people. And yeah, that's, I'd recommend um, that's his, the wonderful his thing. second album. Mm. Well, I think his second album is his best, just to throw that out there. <laughs> Please do. I'm always happy to have recommendations. Excuse me. <laughs> well, it's easy to right. remember because it's called Tiny Tim's second album. So, <laughs> I, I think I might remember that. <laughs> Awesome. Um, I'm just dying to know when we're going to hear the music that you guys got together to recreate right outside of uh, Athens recently. Well, um, it is being mixed at the moment. Um, Tom, yes. as well, is as being a wonderful recording artist and fabulous guitarist, also um, is doing the mixing and the mastering for the album and as you can imagine you know you spend a month writing songs and that's the beginning of the work Mm -hmm. Uh, you know you write the songs you record them and then you've got to do all the finessing so uh well (sighs) how long's a piece and string as soon as possible as soon as possible we're hoping like by late spring early summer Awesome. And I, I, I don't know if it'll happen. I know things are very tricky in the world and as far as not just politics, and but economics and financial. A lot of bands like The Pretenders recently said, Chrissy Hines said, I'm not even going to tour anymore. I lost money on the last tour. I, I couldn't believe it. And that's the way it is. And I'm done touring. So has that affected you? And would you guys possibly come to the USA? Well, we are planning this. Um, we're working with Rocky Road Touring who also uh, manage the Sisters of Mercy, coincidentally. And uh, we have a load of dates set up for the UK in June. We're also going to be doing our premiere show, um, our first show um, in Wave Gothic Treffen in Leipzig. And that's at the end of May. Um, I don't know if you folks have heard of Wave Gothic Treffen. It is a massive gathering of goths and other kind of alternative folks from all over the world. How does it get 40,000 people there? I can't quite remember. Lots, lots and many, many folks. And so we're really pleased to be headlining um, at one of the many venues on the Saturday night, Saturday the 27th, and looking forward to seeing a lot of friends from all over the place that we haven't seen for years. Anyway, that's the June part of the tour. We are currently in the, we can't announce anything firm yet. Uh, Did you say that was Saturday, June 27th? uh, May 27th. May, Saturday, May May 20th. And where where was that going to be? In Leipzig, in Germany. Okay, in Germany. That way people listening, if they're... Oh, uh, yeah, if you're in Germany, come along to Wave Gothic Treffen. We are there at the Tauchenhall on Saturday, the 27th of May. And then we have a number of dates lined up for the UK right through June. And we are in negotiations and um, finalising dates, which we are very much hoping include the USA for later in the year. Yeah, I'd love to meet you in person and walk up to you and say, hey, remember me well, from the Church of Rock? Well, for sure, <laughs> if we make it to Portland, you will be the first to know. And if anyone there would like to 
keep an eye on what we're doing. We do have a website, da 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 da, and it's marchvioletsband.com. And we've got that's right, all, folks. As, the, as the tour dates get announced, they'll be up on the website, marchvioletsband.com. Uh, we've also got a Facebook page called March Violets Band. That is wonderful. Marchvioletsband.com is the place. And since you've done so many novels, have you ever considered or have you started or thought about doing an autobiography about your life? Oh, goodness me, no. <laughs> no? <laughs> no, no, I, I'm, I'm not really one of these people that writes about themselves. I like fiction. I'm very fond awesome. of fiction. And that's why I disappear into the world of a novel. You know, I create completely different characters, totally different, because I write historical fiction. And so I you're, travel you're, back in time in my time machine and uh, just make stuff up. It's great. And I know you used to have a your own particular website for folks that wanted to find more out about you in particular outside of the band. Is that a Rosie Garland uh, address still available to give yeah, to people? Yeah, rosiegarland.com. It's easy to remember, folks. RosieGarland.com. <laughs> Rosie uh, but I, you know, um, I'm really proud of the work I do with the March Violets. I'm really proud of the novels I write. So um, I, life is really short, Derek. Life is very short, and it's not getting any longer. And I'm one of these people that thinks, you know, uh, do it now. Don't yeah, wait. Don't put things off till tomorrow. Yeah, there might not be a tomorrow. There's no guarantees. So, you know, we could be around for years and years and years, or in another hour, we're out of here. We just don't yeah, know. So, yeah. you have it's to like live like live it's, every day. Yeah. Yes. Be here now. Yeah. So, I really appreciate talking with you today. Um, we are going to go ahead and spin some music by the March Violets. I want to wish you a very, very fond Thank farewell, you. and I hope that I get to meet you in person the next time up in Portland, hopefully. Be sure of it. Yeah, Rosie. Well, thanks for making time to be on the show. We'd love to do it again down the road. And we will keep people posted and we will keep playing the March Violets on this show. Thank you so much, Derek. And um, thank you very much, all the lovely listeners as well. Mwah! And I hope to meet you at a gig sometime. Awesome. If there's anything else you'd like to say, the stage is definitely yours out of all respect. Well, it's like I can't, it's just wonderful how folk still love the music of the March Violets, considering we started in the 1980s and have never really stopped. It's, we love our fans because without our fans, we'd be nowhere. So thank you everyone for listening. Really mean that. Well said. What an awesome chat. I really enjoyed this. Thanks again, Rosie. We'll be in touch and all the best to you. Thank you. Bye now. Okay, cheers. Goodbye.